Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. welcome, welcome. welcome, welcome. <laughs> we didn't practice that. We probably should have practiced. One, two, three. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, much better. Hi, ladies. How are you all? And men who are watching, we're happy to have you here tonight. And we're just going to drape, and we're going to learn, and we're going to be honest, and we definitely are hitting a few bumps in the road before we are on tonight, and we just decided, I know we're a little bit late, but we're just decided we're going to go with it, and Diane and Belinda are um, just, everybody's going to be honest, mostly, maybe not all the way, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to try and see what happens, okay? I'm going to start with Diane. So, you guys, I do get this question a lot, and the question is, where do I start? And I guess I think in my own brain, I've done the process so many times, I don't understand why you don't understand. So hearing you all is really important to me, so I can really teach you all better to get over the, the humps, if mm -hmm. that's a good mm -hmm. way of saying it. So I'm gonna start with Diane here for a minute. Um, Diane, did you ask me where do I start or how did you go shopping? She went shopping. Went shopping. <laughs> She's probably heard me say that 40,000 times. Go shopping. So she went shopping, which is really hard these days, of places to go shopping. Mm -hmm. that, that was not easy. Yeah. And you went a place. You found a jacket. I found a jacket. I didn't find one that I loved, but I found one that was too big and one that was a little snug. And so I thought, well, I'll go with the one that's a little snug and we can make it a little bigger. Okay. <laughs> when you are shopping, you are looking for the closest thing circumference-wise to what you like. And the reason why is because if you put on a jacket that's too small, it will limit mobility. And so just by putting that jacket on and by saying, oh, I'll go a little bit li bigger, you don't know what bigger point you will actually like. So we're still trial and erring with a jacket. And the problem with doing that is you're going to spend a lot of time sitting in that chair sewing, trial and erring. Right. So sometimes I hear it, you guys, you hate shopping, you, you know, it's discouraging, you know, all those things. But it is the fastest way to get to the end product that you like. And anything short of that, you're speculating. And when you speculate, you risk complete failure except you're doing it with beautiful fabric and your time and all those other things. So that's why I'm pushing you so hard to get that circumference and understand what it is you like about it. So Diane bought the jacket so that she, which I would recommend that buy it and return it. You know, I mean, there's just stores do it all the time. Keep your receipts. Don't keep it for three months. Keep it for, you know, a short period of time. Get it back to the stores. But that way you have a lot of investigative material that you can get out of that jacket. In Diane's case, what she did is she knew she didn't like the one that was too big. So she scrapped that. She took the one that was too small, figured there was a lot of seams, and her muslin is too small. Okay? We're going to fix that tonight because she doesn't have another muslin. But what I'm saying to you is don't do that. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. Um, because a jacket is unlike any other garment that we wear. It requires mobility. And circumference equals mobility. So if we don't know how much circumference we like, we don't know what mobility it will give us. So let's say, for example, if we went to that larger size, Right. and it was really grossly big or whatever it was, it actually through the bust and chest area, it might have been the right number for the mobility and we could have narrowed the shoulders and fixed the hips. Is that fair? Yeah, that was really the question is, do you go with what closes here? Do you go with what works here or what works here? Because they're all different things. That's right. And what do we go with? What's the answer? Well, usually the bust. That's right. So we're gonna go with the bust measurement and we're gonna fix everything else. In this case, just for tonight, her bust is too small. The jacket, it won't close. We're going to fix that. Just recognize that it's gonna take us a little bit of time to fix it. And if you were at home, if we were not here ready to drape this, I would not recommend you do it this way. It's too much work for you. She's gotta go through and make all the changes that I drape. So 
as I come in and start ripping apart all of these seams, um, you know, the time consumption of this is just more time. So, I, I want to make sure that you get in the right size in the first place. And there's that's not a number, that's your personality and your circumference. Turn around, I'm going to have you face the camera. And those things that are important. So in this particular case, for instance, I can close it, but I don't know um, what if that closing circumference is actually what you like because it doesn't afford you any ease or mobility. Does that make sense? Sure. This whole thing, you guys, I really need it to make sense. And and by all means, if you'll just face that camera. For, yeah, sorry. Um, by all means, I want you all to ask questions to make sure you understand. We're going to present a little concept tonight. It's called proactive interference. Proact we're getting a little heavy here tonight, <laughs> but it's called proactive interference. And I want to read you what this means. It's the tendency of previously learned material to hinder subsequent learning. Does that sound familiar at all to any of you ladies <laughs> out there? And let me tell you why I wanted you to attach a term to it. Number one, because as you know, I get plenty of emails. Don't face the camera. I'll work around you. That's okay. You're just trying to be nice. I totally understand. I just want them to be able to see. Um, I get lots of emails and the reason I answer those emails and the reason I like those emails is because I like to see how you're thinking. And I'm telling you what you're doing is you are hearing something and you are not, you are not incorporating it. You could say you're not listening, but I know you're listening. That's why I wanted you to have this term. I want you to understand it. I want you to recognize that things that you've learned before overtake the current information that's coming in. It's, it's, it's well said, it's well defined, which is why I read it. The way to overcome that is to listen to new information repeatedly until it replaces the old information. It's possible, it's very possible, it's very easy, but you need to be aware that it's um, a real thing and if you ever say to yourself, why am I having such a hard time? It's simply because you haven't listened to it or heard it enough. Once you do, the old information will be gone and it will be replaced with this new information. All right, now, so having said that, I need you guys to ask questions. All right, so what we're doing on Diane is opening this up to where it feels comfortable on her. Again, I'm just not, so, you know, you can drape a body, but it doesn't mean it's got the mobility because it doesn't have sleeves. And you have to take the number off of a finished garment. So even if you can't get there, which I'm going to say Diane's not there tonight, it's still better to start with this than to not start at all. And this way Diane will have a, um, a place to make a jacket. And then if she doesn't like it, we'll go to the plan B. It will take fabric though. It will be, it will take making it up if that makes sense. All right, questions, any questions? What is, a, what is about fit that limits mobility? It's not a fit, it's circumference. Circumference is mobility. So fit, remember we define fit as when the length, circumference, and depth of the pattern matches the length, circumference, and depth of my body. So depth doesn't limit mobility and length doesn't limit mobility. But circumference, because I move my arm forward when I move, if I don't have any circumference, in a knit, for instance, the, the fabric expands. But in a woven, in a jacket, we don't have that, and so we have to have additional, it's called ease. Ease is mobility. Ease is circumference. All right, did I answer that whole question there? This is a pretty muslin, pretty uh -huh. blue color. It shows up good too on, on the camera. It looks really good. <laughs> well, you might as well use a pretty color. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. I think that's really true. Look how pretty that looks in the back. Uh -huh. 
And what I'm trying to do is go around and take about the same amount all the way. And keep in mind that the shape of this jacket is just beautiful. Don't destroy the shape, just expand the circumference. You'll still get beautiful shaping in the back. It'll still be what you want it to be. Okay, so this first step, I'd like you not have to not to have to do it because it just takes time and time that I'm hope, hopeful we can uh, do away with. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna say we've got circumference down, even though I know darn well we don't. <laughs> But okay, we just, we're gonna say the circumference is correct. I really do feel like if she were to make a jacket this size, I feel like it'd just be too small on her. But for now, we're just gonna say, okay, we've got the circumference just right. Now again, what Diane said is if you've got numbers, you've got several numbers you can be measuring, when we're picking out a jacket and we're picking out size, we're only worried about the bust, that's it. Sorry. Okay, how's it feel? It feels okay. Probably no, don't know. <laughs> okay, it looks really good. Mm -hmm. It does. It looks really pretty. I'm just going to have you kind of turn around, if you don't mind, and just let them see. Okay. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to deal with, we're going to assume circumference is okay. And you guys, if you can try to ask circumference at that point. Belinda, let's look at your circumference. Mm -hmm. And talk to us a little bit about what you did, if you'll look at that camera. Not okay. me, please. Okay, so I knew what size I wanted my jacket at the bust line, so okay. I chose my pattern based on that size. Perfect. And then I just made a is straight that close muslin. Is the bust line? It does. Here is the... And you wear... I mean, you're okay with it being that taut? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, and then I just made a straight muslin based on that. Okay, and you knew that no, nothing else would work? Yeah, I knew that down below the bust area, there was going to have to be some adjustments. Okay. So when you go to make those adjustments, and I've heard this said many times, um, I only need a little bit in the front. Can I just use those front seams? No. Circumference is a total of all those seams. So even if you only need a little bit in the front, guess what? We're going to all the seams, girls. <laughs> so you're going to, from the place it fits, and I feel like it fits around the waistline, it seems like it closes there in the front. I'm going to rip this out and I'm going to do, I'm going to start just a little bit above the waist, if that's fair. Mm -hmm. Do I keep coming around? Because that's where I noticed the change. I promise I didn't tie. You promise what? <laughs> I didn't backstitch. Oh, no, no, no. No, that was pretty easy ripping, actually. It's a great way to get at your frustrations, you guys, is just yeah. rip these muslins apart. Okay, so. Um, once you have that open, we're going to pin close, if you'll face the camera for me, you guys, if you'll try to remember that. Um, I actually know how to drape. I'm trying to teach everybody how <laughs> So once you have it open, you want to bring the fronts to center fronts and close, unless you're making a jacket that is, uh, you know, that you want it to be worn open. See, now to me, when you wear that like that, you've got a gap right there at that bust. It's too so it's small. So it's just a little small? To me. Okay. It's your jacket okay. though. Okay. But if you're going to close it, it's going to have a little gap. Okay. Because see, it's not happy. Not happy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's all you guys, and, and you just have to remember, it's your jacket, how you want to wear it. If you want your jacket to gap, who am I to tell you it shouldn't, you know? It's totally fine. Okay. So, um, so the next thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some more pins, sorry, sorry, and I'm just going to close up the rest of that body. Now, when I'm closing up, sorry Diane, thanks. When I'm closing up the rest of that body, in a princess seam, you don't need to worry about length because I can make that length wherever I want it to be as I'm pinning. So all I have to do is kind of close it up to her body. And I'm just gonna, you're, you're better off. Now see, again, to me, this is another argument of why you don't wanna to try to drape circumference on yourself because it's hard to drape circumference on the yes, back of you. Yes. So you want to try to get it as close as possible, you know, in that measurement process. And I, I think, I always call this overhauling and tweaking. This is overhauling to me. This is too much work 
because you picked the wrong size. So again, if I were at home and I were making the wrong size, I would say go home and make up another size. But I mean, you're here, I don't care. I love to drape. <laughs> I just want it to be as easy as possible on you all. Alrighty, that looks so pretty. And then I'm gonna have you turn just a little bit more. There we go. And I'm just gonna put these in here. Okay, questions we can answer. Anything? Anybody out there? <laughs> so my question is, you never let out in the bust area when you're fitting. No, why? To give yourself just like that quarter inch, half inch more through here. Why not just cut it on the pattern? Why make up a size exactly as the pattern <laughs> tissue is okay, no, if not. you know the size isn't accurate to what you need? And I guess that's not what I'm asking. I mean, okay. after you've done your shopping, you've, you've taken the measurement, you think you've got the right okay. circumference for that bust. Okay. Would it be best to start over with a new muslin or to go ahead and take a little bit out of these seams here? It depends on how far off you are. Okay. You know, you, you're, the, you're gonna be the one to determine that. Okay. You know, but keep in mind that it shouldn't just be these seams again. It, it should all be the all seams, the way around. Okay, and the bust area is at the armhole. So if you're letting out this, you're affecting the armhole and the sleeve. Okay. So you want that circumference to be distributed. All the way around. Yeah, even though that is a very, that is a proactive interference issue. Because <laughs> I hear it over and over again, women say to me, but I'm bigger in the front than I am in the back. And I always say back, you know, that's just because God didn't put eyes in the back of you because he did not want you to see what was back there. <laughs> you know, we maybe have bigger fronts, but we need mobility from the back. So circumference is divided evenly. There's no such thing as a right place for a side seam or a right place for any of those things. Fair it's enough. simply total circumference gives uh -huh. us mobility. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, and try really hard not to... Um, I don't know what you'd call it. Try to make that any more difficult than it is, I guess. Right. This looks beautiful. I mean, it really looks pretty. Let me just clean up this one side seam. All right, Belinda, anything you see on her? Or, or Belinda, anything you see on Diane? Or Diane, vice versa? Well, I don't have the shoulder pads in. I have mine. Right, because we're only so doing we're just circumference. circumference. Right, we're going to get, we're going to, and I know y'all are just mine. excited to get there. <laughs> yeah. That's all good. I didn't get this, sorry. We got a question. Okay, Diane, grab some pins. You can, you can drape. Anybody knows how to do this. All we're doing is kind of equally on each seam, or somewhat equally on each seam. We're just trying to bring her to where it will work. Okay, and boy, that looks pretty. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something, you guys. When you make it too tight in the bust, I think we're less likely to wear it. That's probably just a horrible opinion. Or you'd end up just not ever buttoning. But it still doesn't fit. It doesn't. You're but right. You know, we spend years in clothes that don't fit. Yes. I have spent my entire life in clothes that don't fit because I'm telling I'm you, so no sorry. designer I mean, that makes designs me sad. for my body I, I do. I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It just makes me sad, and I want even more for you to get there. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not settle, you know, to really get what you like because it's not hard. It's really, these, these principles, you guys, are just not hard. But just remember... It, you don't have to have a fixed number you can split in the middle and you know Diana and I were talking ahead of time you guys go to these high-end stores I don't care what you look like I don't care what you dress like they're working in the store and if they're working in the store they're there to help you and you know don't get into this oh I can't go into that store I don't belong there I don't deserve there go into the store try on what you want and if it fits well buy it and then return it and save your receipt just make sure you ask about their return policy because <laughs> you know they're just make sure you ask. Don't say Peggy said I could return <laughs> it. Don't do that. Okay, always start at center front. Yes, you have to close up center front. Center front is straight to grain because the body is crooked, and this is the jacket's ability to give you an illusion that the body is straight. There's nothing straight about the body. The shoulder angle, the arm hold, everything is off grain except for center front. Center back isn't even on grain because the back is, is crooked. So the center front is closed up to give you an illusion of, of straightness 
and everything else evolves around it. Okay? How else could you fit how else could you fit this? I might have missed this. Think you answer. Just measure correctly on the pattern. No, you can't you, you will not know what you like in a jacket. You can't go by a measurement. You have to go by a jacket measurement. Again, this is an example of proactive interference because you all have been told for most of your lives, measure your bust and buy that size mm -hmm. or make that size. Mm -hmm. Right. And somebody in New York included the amount of ease that should be in your jacket. Mm -hmm. They don't know you. You know, everybody has the same amount of ease. It's ridiculous. You have to measure clothing. In order to know what you're like, in order to duplicate what you like, you have to measure clothing. It's rule number one. If you don't have any clothing to measure, then you go shopping. But don't compromise in that process, or even because you don't know any more. I know you're getting close, but you're still not where I want you to be, and I want you to be right on. That's all. Okay, what is the seam allowance for making the muslin? Oh, they've just added, they've made it one inch. Mm -hmm. So instead of the three eighths, They've increased it five eighths for a total of one inch. They haven't changed the stitch lines. They're still on the same exact stitch lines. Okay, so would you have gone to the next size up for your muslin? At the bust. If her bust was larger, I would have gone to the next size. Or again, stop thinking of sizes. You have all the sizes in between. So if there was a 35 that she measured and a 38 that she measured, cut it right in the half and go in the middle of it, okay? If I want this jacket shorter, where do I take that off? Take it off the bottom, take it off the bottom. Just cut it off. You don't change the bust, you don't change the waist, you're only changing the length, you take it off the bottom. Measure a jacket circumference. Do you do it from the outside buttoned? How far down from the armhole? Right through the bust, right through the fullest part of your body. So if you put it on, wherever the fullest part of that jacket is, that's where you measure. Usually it's under the armhole, yes, but the widest part of the jacket, okay? That may be where I've been going wrong, because I've been doing it right at the armhole instead of Me lower too. where my bust is really hitting in the jackets. Well, it should be pretty close to the same. Yeah. It should be pretty close to the same. Can you fix the gap in the front for her? Um, yeah. Yeah, she likes it, though. She measured it. I'm not going to change it, because she likes it. It's her jacket, remember? You always got to give respect <laughs> to the jacket wear. Always. Okay, so circumference. Any questions on circumference, let us know. We're going to jump to the next part, which is uh, length. In a princess seam jacket, in a silhouette pattern, I shouldn't have any length issues. You know, if I'm really, really tall or really, really short, you probably will. But if you turn around in this particular jacket, you see that that, that waist fits her beautifully. There is a pattern, it doesn't matter, but basically it's called a floating waist. And, and I, I know how to do that on a pattern. I've done this on the pattern. So you really don't need to worry about bust and waist and lengths. It's really done for you. Kind of check off that box and we're going to move on. Let's look at Diane's back just to see how that is. Same thing. That looks beautiful on her. And the back of this jacket is beautifully shaped. Um, you know, I always say to people, don't muck it up. It's gorgeous. I mean, it really is. It's such a pretty jacket. There's so many jackets out there that are just flat in the back. And I think the back of a female is so pretty. I just really want you to be able to show it off. All right, so we're going to do depth now. I haven't gotten a jacket that fits and can't go shopping. Would it be okay to measure how you would like it to fit in the same manner of pants? No, you can't do that. It's totally different than pants. All you're doing with pants is sitting down. You could sit down, measure your hips, sit down, and that's the number you could use. We got a formula for that. You can't do that for jackets. You know, and I guess unless you reach forward your arms and, I mean, no, no. So I would really say to you, if you really have no jackets and if you cannot go shopping, wait until you can go shopping to make a jacket. A jacket takes more time than any other garment we make. So it doesn't make sense to me to just kind of hit and miss and see if I get it right. That's to me. If you feel like you want to, then it's your jacket and you do that. Okay, and I'm just going to have you put your arms just straight down. Yeah. Just because as you pull your arms forward, you pull the jacket forward. All right, and I'm going to put um, Diane, when I asked Diane what shoulder pad size she wanted, she said she didn't know. But upon further interrogation, <laughs> 
We figured out that she didn't measure any jackets. She couldn't even find a one-inch shoulder pad. They're so, all half inch. They're all half inch. So we determined that she likes a half an inch. Did you put a one inch seam allowance around the armhole? No. Oh yes, just on, no, just on this one. Around the armhole? No. No. Three. Okay, so you guys, just right here, you can see where it's kind of, um, when she puts her arm down, it's kind of pulling a little bit. I'm just gonna relieve that seam so that it gives her a little more comfort. It's a three eighths, it won't be there. Also, it'll cause wrinkling if it's um, in the way. I'm gonna do that to the other side too. Just um, just from your shoulders and your arms, they're just a little bit forward and that'll give you kind of a little bit of release, much better. And let me put that shoulder pad in on this side. I'm gonna kind of go through here. And so this is an example of a half inch shoulder pad. And then Belinda's gonna use a one inch shoulder pad so we'll get to see both. So I did have a question about the shoulder pads. Yes ma'am. Does it typically change with the weight of the fabric so in the summer would you see smaller shoulder pads and then the winter it does ones? for me it does for me but shoulder pads are all styling it's all up to you it's all what you like it's all styling I have a tendency though to change them when I have heavier fabrics I use a one inch because it kind of presses them down a little bit and when I have a lighter summer weight jacket I have a tendency to more use a I want it to more look, look like a blouse as opposed to a jacket, if that makes sense. But I also think it's formal versus informal. So you think the bigger is more formal? Stop clasping your arms, you guys. <laughs> it. No, that's okay. It just completely changes the top of your jacket. I think the larger is more formal, yes, okay. for sure. The thinner, a more natural shoulder pad is definitely more informal. Okay? Um, once you get the shoulder seam adjustment, how do you fit? We're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on just a minute. I know you have problems. Just hold on. You got to listen to where we're at. When I try to fit the bust, the armhole and shoulders are way too big. When I try to fit the bust, the armholes and shoulders are way too big. That's probably not true on this pattern. So I'm going to ask you back. Is it this pattern? That is called proactive learning, proactive interference. Because in the past, you've purchased a pattern that graded everywhere the same. So when you bought it for the bust, everything was too big. So we have a tendency to still use that excuse 10 years down the road. When the whole reason I started Silhouette Patterns is I don't grade out the shoulder and the bust at the same ratio. So you can get the bust that fits and the shoulders are not gonna be too wide. And if they are, they'll be a tiny little bit and you can take it in with the princess seam. So we're gonna get that excuse off the books because it's not valid with a Silhouette Pattern. Is that fair? Okay, so you measure a ready-to-wear jacket when it's actually on you. No, it doesn't have to be on you. No, you're trying to measure flat. It doesn't matter. Measuring it on you is going to be way too hard. Take it off, lay it on the table, measure it. Just as long as you are measuring it in the right place. Okay, don't make this rocket science, you guys. Come on. Mm -hmm. I just think it's more important that you know what to do with that measurement and that you are free to not have... One, don't go by sizes in the store, go by circumferences, okay? And sizes have a tendency, I think, to lock us up in our head. Mm -hmm. I do. Do you recommend trying on a jacket most similar to the style and fabric you plan to use, or does it matter that much? There are so many jacket styles. I would do as close as possible, you know? What we want is to make sure we're successful. That's what we want. Diane's back seam seems wider on one side from the other. Oh my goodness. It's not, you guys. It's the same. What if your arms are too big for the right size jacket to measure? We're not measuring arms. We didn't get there yet. You're jumping ahead again. Up, up, up. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Go back. Okay? We're only on the shoulder pads. We haven't even picked up a sleeve yet, girls. Okay. So, <laughs> you guys are tough, man. <laughs> <laughs> So the depth issues that you have in a jacket, there are going to be four, four possibilities. One is a rounded back. How can you tell? Belinda, typically, many times you guys have seen me fit her, she has a rounded back, so she puts on that little collar just to make sure she doesn't have it in this jacket. Why? Because the, the seam, the darts are in place here. They're still in their original position when you make a princess seam, and that gives enough rounding of the back for her. So don't assume that once you do a rounded back, you do it in everything you make. 
Um, a top, a knit top is going to be one case, a, bl a blouse is going to be another case, and then of course a, a jacket is going to be another case, and sometimes even a jacket to a princessing jacket. Again, it depends on where the darts are and what's been moved out, but this looks really good, so mm -hmm. she does not have an issue. Miss Diane. Diane, you often have a rounded back too, yeah. don't you? Okay, let's turn, yep, 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 yep. Okay. That looks good also. I don't think that has a problem. Let, let go, I'll hold your hair just so you can stand up straight, yeah. Yeah, that looks really nice. I usually I have to do it in everything. So yeah. it's, it's laying right there on the back. Yeah, it's I mean, it's really doing good, Diane. I'll do one just if it makes you feel better, but no. I, don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you need it, okay? No more work. <laughs> yeah, it is more work. You're right. Let's keep it simple. <laughs> yeah, that looks really good. Yeah, it does. Okay, now with Diane, I'm going to have her turn side. Nope, nope, just right where you can see there. <laughs> and you can see that... Um, that shoulder pad, and there's two problems that are going on at the same time. Do you have to put in shoulder pads? Yes. Um, you know, shoulder pads are a construction process. They're not about you. They're not about your personality. It's kind of like saying, do I have to put in a shoulder seam? It's a part of the jacket construction. And it's what a jacket, it's what it's what a jacket falls off of it. What It's what gives a sleeve support. And when you take away the supports, you can't expect the fit of a jacket. So I would ask you, if you want to take away the shoulder pads, why are you making a jacket? You should just make a blouse. Because that's really where you're going. And we've got princessing blouses that work. I, I don't think I would go for a jacket. That's an opinion, okay? Okay, a jacket to me is priceless. A shoulder pad, is a part of the process. It's a beautiful part of the process. Um, football shoulders are not a reason to discard shoulder pads. They're a reason to move them in, not make them broad. And the shoulder pads don't do anything but make you look younger and thinner. How's that? Okay, knowing those two things it might change your mind, huh, girls? That's why I want the one inch. They make you look younger and thinner. Did y'all hear Belinda? She said that's why she wants the one inch. <laughs> Okay, what you're going to do with a shoulder pad is you're going to, you know, make sure that arm is free and you're going to pick it up and drape this. Now, even again, you guys, when you're doing this by yourself, if Diane was trying to do this, she takes that hand, she looks sidewards in the mirror. If this is the mirror, she pinches this up. You put one pin there and then you can take it off, sew it, and put it back on. Right. You only have to do one side unless you know there's a difference. But even if you know there's a difference, I wouldn't drape both sides. I would do a difference of shoulder pads. The whole reason we wear clothing, what's that joke? Oh, what do people over 50 use for birth control? We could be like 60, nudity. <laughs> so the whole purpose of our clothing is to make us look better and look um, even, is that fair? Yeah. So anyway, that's an opinion. If you don't wanna do all that, that's up to you. Okay, then Diane, with Diane, I'll go to Belinda in just a minute, but with Diane, she's got a little bit of um, extra right in here. There's a princess seam, and man, I'm just gonna zip that out, easy peasy, no problem. She doesn't like it, and that's where she probably felt like this would be too big, because upper chest area is a substantial place that sometimes you just get too much extra fabric. And it comes from two places. What cup size did you use? D. Okay. It comes from there being too much, uh, not enough depth. And then of course, this is really an issue of, I'm gonna pull this right into this pin, so it just bridges. But you can see I kind of took all that away. And actually, I'm gonna trim it so they can see it if you don't mind. Because with it being uh, a lot, it's hard to even when you take it away, it's hard to see the improvement because it's still sticking there. Okay, so there it is. And then the other thing I want you to notice is there's a little bit of extra fabric in here and that is going to be depth. There is not enough depth in this D cup for her. So I'm gonna actually go to the side seam in a princess seam. Did you see that, you guys? This is priceless. Can they see that camera wise? Okay, I want you to take a dart. It's gonna, that dart is gonna come from the side seam this is the easiest thing in the world to do. And we're just gonna, it, the, it's just as if you were stitching a dart, but it is not going to be in the final garment. It's simply going to be in the tissue. 
And if you're not sure what to do with this, we'll show you. It will end at the princess seam. And what we want to do is, this is depth. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh. We want to clean up the side of her to between the shoulder pad and the dart here that you can see there's just no extra fabric at all. It's absolutely beautiful. And that will make you look thinner. All that extra fabric hanging around is just fluff and it's just not appealing. Now, when you take this from the side seam, you're gonna, just so that the side seams will match, you're gonna do the exact same thing in the back. And again, I'm gonna turn her around so y'all can see what I'm doing. Many times when I drape, you actually can't this it doesn't stop here can you kind of see there's a bubble there and then it it's just not going to stop most of the time when you're taking that little dart that matches the side seam it actually goes to the center back it gets smaller here but it doesn't get small enough to just eliminate it so just trust the cloth listen to what the cloth is telling you to do and the t cloth will actually talk to you it will say take me to the back seam, take me to the back seam, please. <laughs> if you listen, if you're not listening. So what if it doesn't tell you? <laughs> and you're not listening, you'll hear this. It will say, take me to the back seam, please, Diane. You're the fabric whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look at that. I mean, look, oh, gosh. Now you know why I love draping. It's amazing what a little tiny dart in the right place will do. So many of us on the sewing machine, we quibble about eighth inches and quarter inches. I wish you'd quibble as much on the pattern and in the darting, and that is just beautiful on her. Oh, that is gorgeous. And I will talk about the changes in here in just a minute. Let's, let's do Belinda. Okay, so remember Belinda had a one inch shoulder pad, which is what the pattern calls for. Should I be answering questions? Sorry. When cutting the muslin, how much should you add to the seam lines for fitting adjustments. The seam lines currently have a 3 8 If you, that the cutting line includes a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So if you add 5 8 to the cutting line, that will give you a one inch seam allowance. Just make sure that you stitch on the original stitch line. So add 5 8 and then stitch one inch from the edge. Did I say that okay? That is correct. Okay, everybody got that? You gotta hear that over and over again so this proactive interference won't get you. <laughs> Okay, could you please remind us of this pattern number? <laughs> That's proactive interference. <laughs> 1900, it's called the four button jacket. When trying on in stores, do you suggest picking out a hip circumference we like as well? Yeah, I just don't expect it to be in the same jacket. Yeah, I have no problem with that. Just don't expect it to be in the same garment. Would you suggest cutting the first muslin on a straight size based on bust, even when you know you will need a larger hip size? Guess what, girls? You're the one doing all the work. So it doesn't matter to me. If you want to cut it straight and knowing you have to make it bigger, or if you want to try to at least get it to the size you know it should be, I would go for plan B. I would try to get it as close as possible. But that's me. You know, I want the jacket. I don't want to be in the process for the next two months. I want the clothing. I am extremely materialistic. Okay, so with Belinda, if you notice, in her um, armhole. Notice that shoulder pad's kind of poking out a little here and she's got a little bit of a little wrinkle in here. So what that pulling up is going to do for her is it's gonna clean all that up. So we're gonna pick it up and we're gonna re-angle that shoulder seam. This is probably an alteration that 95% of you will see. And if you say to me, which others have said, well, why don't you just change the pattern? <laughs> because everyone's different. Everyone is, you know, if I were to measure Diane and if I were to measure, everyone's different. Just And it's easy for you to do, just pick it up and drape it. Okay, and see how that tightens this through here? She is in a D cup. This is already nice and tight. She doesn't need any of that. In fact, she doesn't need anything. That back looks incredible. I like it all, even your gap in your bust. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's all she needs on that. So that's length we did it circumference you don't have to worry about depth we had a couple issues we have the shoulder seam little bust start there sometimes you'll have a sway back again in this pattern you probably won't have a sway back because you can fix it through circumference when you're shaping that back okay you altered the length of the side seam 
Did you add additional length to the sides? No, 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 no. I didn't lengthen the side mm -hmm. seam. I changed the front and the back. I changed both to be equal. So there's no other place that you should go and fix it or change it. Do not add to the bottom. Do not do anything. Otherwise, you just mess up. That's another proactive interference thing you have had. You've learned that if you take it out here, you put it here, and that is just crazy talk. So try really hard to just do what works and leave it good enough alone, all right? And do not add to the armhole. Well, uh, we haven't talked about the seam. armhole yet. Additional seam allowance. Oh, do not add seam allowance to the armhole. Do not add seam allowance. You guys, if you go on the website under instruction, there's an, on the left-hand column, there's instruction pages on making up a muslin. You can just go through those and, and read them. They might help you, right? Yeah. Right? The baby? Right. They're good. They're just there to make it easy for you, but you know, it's been a long time since we've done anything like this, so probably people don't know. Okay. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk arm, because I fully expect that you have circumference, you get length, you get depth, now we're gonna do armhole and sleeve. Isn't this gonna be fun? Let's do a little bit of drawing just beforehand. Are you guys okay? Diana's still in shock that she doesn't need a rounded back. <laughs> I brought my strip. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's got her strip all ready to go. We'll st with strip, we'll travel. Or whatever it's called. <laughs> with strip, we'll travel. And I'm gonna take that pad um, just for one half a second. I'm sorry, I don't know if I can do that. Okay, got it, got it, got it. We're just gonna do a little bit of um, crayon work here before we do anything. Is it all mine? Yeah. Oh my, golly, golly, golly. Okay, on this, if you notice the red, and I purposely did that because I knew we would most likely have to change that shoulder pad. When you change the shoulder pad, you see that what I did to the cap height is I reduced it the same amount of the shoulder pad. You do not have to do that. It's your choice. When you're measuring that jacket you like, you also want to measure the armhole that you like because the other thing I can do is I can drop that armhole down. Hey, that wasn't too bad, you guys. Yeah, that looks good. <laughs> anyway, you can drop that armhole down and you can use the same size armhole as what you started with. Or you can reduce the cap height. Those are your two options. Easy enough? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's talk armholes and sleeves. Mm -hmm. So, do you know what size armhole you like? Not the exact measurements, no, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> so, if you don't know, I'm gonna suggest that you keep the size that's there. Yeah. Okay? You know, I can help you with everything to just go with. The only thing I can't help you with is the size. I can't help you pick out the circumference. The only thing like I, I wish I could figure out a formula to help you, but it's too based on personality. I think the only thing I have struggled with with my armhole is they sometimes seem so low mm -hmm. um, that it restricts a little bit. Okay. Uh, and I noticed that that was one of the things that Laura mentioned the other day. And have you made jackets? On. I have made jackets. Well, now what Laura did though, and interestingly enough, she did the whole gamut. She measured the armhole. She did the mm -hmm. whole thing. So once she lowered this shoulder seam, uh -huh. she knew to change the cap height. Cap height, right, okay. So that is the beauty of it. Now, it, I don't think you'll make a jacket and if the armhole's too low, you'll hate the jacket. I agree with that. I think you'll just say, gosh, next time, I kind of like your blouse little escapade right. you went on, you said, next time I wanna do this, next time I wanna do this, and you get better and better and better. That's kind of like my Armani I've made. I'm very happy with it, but I know it's not right. But I wear it, and I'm proud of it's it. It's a process. And it's, it's, it is a learning process. Yeah, and, and I would really say, as long as you feel like you're learning, I, I think it's an important process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I really do. Okay, having said that, you are going to then leave your armhole. Yes. And, and change the cap height. Yes. And you know how to do that. Yes. Okay, good girl. So we're going to put the sleeve on. The sleeve has circumference, length, and depth also. I'm just going to basically pin it here in place. And what we'll notice about the sleeve is that, um, and when you're doing this, you guys, try really hard not to look down at your arms. You've got to use a mirror. No, I know they're just habit, I know. <laughs> but you've got to use a mirror. You've got to yeah. use a mirror because as your body changes and you're turning in your arms and everything, everything's shifting. So you want to use a mirror. And if you can see here, there's a bend here in the fabric 
that um, is bending differently than what her arm is bending. I guess that's the best way I know how to say it. So her arm is more bent than the sleeve. And that's about the only problem you'll run into. So what you're going to do is you're gonna take a dart above the elbow in the front of the sleeve. And you're just gonna give it a greater bend. And it's gonna happen in the front of the under sleeve and in the front of the upper sleeve. And I know you've seen this before, it's not difficult. And that dart is going to taper to nothing in the back seam. This is called a two-piece sleeve. And the whole reason you have a two-piece sleeve is so that we can bend the sleeve like the arm is bent. And the beauty of a two-piece sleeve is that because it mirrors the shape of our arm, we're not fighting the sleeve as we move forward. It actually moves as we go forward. If the sleeve is straighter, we're actually combating the sleeve in the first few minutes of movement, or a few seconds, whatever. <laughs> but, so you understand that as she starts to go forward, that sleeve goes right with her. And so that bend is a really will facilitate mobility in a sleeve. And you can usually go with a smaller sleeve if it's shaped correctly. And the jacket makes you look thinner. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the smaller the sleeves are, the, the better the jacket looks, I think. That looks really good. How's it feel? It feels good. Good. Yeah. Okay. You're fired. Okay. Grab your <laughs> for me. Thank you, really. <laughs> guys have done all the work on this. Okay, Belinda, I mean, Diane, let's put your arm here. And again, I'm gonna have you just kind of rotate a little bit to them. And you can, again, just relax your arm. Yeah, you guys, it's really, tr it's, it's hard to kind of relax, especially when we're, I'm pushing you and poking you and doing all that other stuff. But you can see the twist. And the twist is simply because the sleeve is too straight for your bent arm. Now it's real common in one piece sleeves, but this is a two piece sleeve. So as long as we're doing these two pieces, we want all the full advantage of the two piece sleeve. So I'm gonna come in above her elbow, above her elbow. I wanna bend it above where her elbow is. And I'm gonna take that to the back. The seam in the front, the under, upper and under sleeve both get the same dart, same amount, and then it tapers to nothing all the way to the back seam of the upper and under sleeve. And it will make a large difference, as you can see. Put one more pin in there so you actually... Make it all smooth. It does make it all smooth. And again, it's not really just about the looks. It's how much easier it is when you go to actually move, because the sleeve is not fighting against you. I have a low shoulder more than you adjusted. I have always tried to get the shoulders even. Looking in a jacket or coat, how would you handle it? I would stuff, just like when we were young. We used to stuff our bras. I'd stuff the shoulder pads. I would make the jacket the same and I would stuff the shoulder pads, even if they were indifferent until I knew how different the right shoulder was from the left shoulder. That's what I would do. You said there are typically four potential depth issues that might need correcting when draping a jacket. Can you repeat what the four are? They're rounded back, the shoulder angle, the bust uh, dart right here that you have to make, and then sometimes you get a sway back. We did not see a sway mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. We didn't see a rounded back, and we didn't see a sway back. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> <Can you change? laughs> so girls, you're, you're better than you think? Is I that what you're saying? <laughs> um, how do you change cap height? I have it on that little picture. Let's bring that picture up again just to make sure we understand it. Um, you can see you just take it off the top of the upper sleeve only. Notice I, uh, it's the same amount as you reduce the shoulder seam. So with your shoulder pad, if it's a half an inch, then you take a half inch off the cap height. You don't change the under sleeve if you notice, it's only the upper sleeve. Please elaborate on lowering the cap height. I think I just did. Always. Do you use a French curve? You don't even need a French curve, you guys. You can take your original pattern and just slide it down a half an inch and then just redraw it. You don't have to get fancy if you're nervous about the French curve. Would I use a French curve? Yes. But if you're not sure how to use one, just use the pattern and pull it down a half inch. Can you convert a one piece sleeve into two? Yes, it's called pattern making. <laughs> <laughs> we only start with one sleeve and that one piece sleeve is converted into every other sleeve we have, thus also into a two piece sleeve, okay? 
Diana's, does Diana have too much fabric between the princess seam and the lapel? Yeah, we took that away though. It's still, you're still seeing because it's, it's pinned. It's still a little sloppy, but I, I like it the way it's pinned when you go to look at it. But thank you for looking out for her, Diana. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking out for you, sweetie. Anything else? Are we okay? Questions are yours, you guys. All right, I'm gonna let Diane. Questions you had in the process. I know it was a struggle to get to that it right was a struggle. size. Yeah, because I'd look at the sizing on the pattern, and no one size fit. Let me just say something to you guys. Wouldn't it be a glorious thing if all your struggling was before you started the garment, and then once you went into that garment, you'd know all your answers were there. Well, sure. That's actually what I want. I want the hardest part of this to be prior to c cutting that muslin. Mm -hmm. Most of the, my head work, most of my struggle about my clothing or my design choices, they're all up here. And there's times I struggle with stuff up here for a long period of time. But once I get it here, I'm ready and, I, and it goes smoothly. Does that make sense? So that will be the hardest part. That will be the hardest part. I'm okay with that being the hardest part. Just don't give up on that. Don't cave into it. Don't say, oh, I've spent two hours doing this. I'm sick of it. Recognize that that's the hardest part and be patient with that process. It's hard getting past old learning. It's called well, sure. yeah. proactive interference. Yeah, it's very that's hard why to get I past want you that. to actually know there's a term for it. It's not just you, it's mm -hmm. not just we're crazy. There is actually a you know, a learning, it's, it's a learning name curve. for yeah. this process where new learning doesn't actually replace old learning because that old learning is cemented so mm -hmm. deeply. Yeah, if you had taught me 50 years ago, I'd have been better off. <laughs> you know, for me, for me, if you tell me, you know, something that I do wrong, I can, bec I can become aware of it and I can change it. If I don't know what I'm doing wrong, then it's harder for me to recognize it and change it. It's easier if somebody tells me. Yeah. So that's why I'm telling you, this is a normal thing. You're probably familiar with it. I've seen it in all of you. I've seen it in myself. Let's be aware of it and let's try to make the change mm -hmm. more effective. Okay, if you wanted to wear the jacket open, if you said before, take a, take a small dart from princess seam near apex to center front. No, once this has the right depth to it and you want to wear it open, that this front will hang straight. That alteration was only if the jacket itself did not hang straight. The jacket that we were doing on, this will hang straight. Mm -hmm. The depth is all correct. So once it's correct, even if you remember there's length, circumference, and depth. If the depth is correct and I take away circumference, it doesn't mess up the depth. That correction was for a jacket where the depth wasn't correct in the first place, okay? Does your shoulder pad eliminate the need for shoulder pad adjustment? It can sometime. It can in some cases. Um, but it's mostly because with a shoulder pad in place, that shoulder seam can be a little off and still slide by. It doesn't have to be as exact. And what I was really um, excited about was, number one, the jacket, I didn't have to do the round the back. The other thing, this is the first time I have put something on that I didn't feel like I needed to do the rounded shoulder and then do all the sleeve adjustments for a rounded shoulder because of the way the jacket hung on me with the it's shoulder pretty. pad. It's really pretty. What has always impressed me is Peggy's drafting. Her patterns fit better than others before you start tweaking. Well, thank you. But I really do not think I would have ever started a pattern company if I didn't see lots of room for improvement. There mm -hmm. was a lot of room for improvement. The patterns that you all are working with, they might cost 99 cents. They're not worth 99 cents. <laughs> and that, I don't even think that's an exaggeration. I just... You know, it's a joy to bring you a pattern that is, you know, good. It's a great base, but you still have to know and you still have to tweak and you still have to understand how to do all that. Okay, it still takes education and learning on your part. Can you tell us about the jacket you're wearing? Sure. So I just wanted to show you a, a knit version because an unlined, no lining knit version. So what I did on this one, the fabric is 3420 and 3446. I mix those two fabrics together. I love it. I just love it. So basically I did the front and the back and the blue and the collar. 
sorry I'm a collar, and then everything else went to the black side. And then I made a cow, which was 34.48. We got back in the black and that royal blue rayon, which is so pretty, and I, I love it. I think that rayon stuff is great for summertime. Even though no lining on this project, do you have a quick pointer for linings? Well, we'll do that in the sew alongs. The sew along will have that lining and we'll show you how to put it in. It's not hard to put it in. There's sometimes like this because it's a stretch woven. I mean, I've seen jackets that are lined that are lined with stretch lining. It's just not what I wanted. I wanted it light and cooler and mm -hmm. shorter, almost like a little blouse, if that's fair. I just wanted it, you know, it's kind of, a, it's totally a different animal, I think. Right. When you start wearing jackets. I wear jackets a lot. I love them. I don't think they're for... I just don't think they're for work. <laughs> I think they have such a positive look to them. They make us look thinner. But I, I just love jackets. All right. Okay. Um, please remember that you have always new ladies that need to ask basic, simple questions. Please be patient. Of course I'm patient, but let me say something back to you, you guys. If you are new and you know you're new, don't ask those basic, simple questions. Do your homework. Spend some time on your own because you know you're new and you know they're basic, and go through all the other webcasts that we've done, my goal here always is to take you up levels. I want you to get better and better and better and better. And if I've got a thousand people who are asking the same basic questions when they're in 40 other videos, then that impairs all those who can ask more questions. So if you're new, and if you know you're new, and if you know they're basic, then just sit back and watch and relax and know that the questions are answered in other places. Is that fair? Sounds good to me, but I'm the one saying it. So if you argue with me, I'm okay with that too. Okay. Um, we are going to take off, not this Saturday, it's the following Saturday. We're going to finish our jacket. My little Maybelline over there is what I've named her. She just can't wait to get her body together. Is this learning for you guys? Yes. Do you feel definitely. like? Do you feel like you're ready? Yeah. I think every time I do it, it just I learn a little bit more to tweak and get better. You know. Um, so just you know, one thing Diane said earlier, she said not a lot of stores are open. Neiman Marcus is opening tomorrow. A little owl told me tonight. <laughs> that Neiman Marcus is opening tomorrow. Don't feel, I think Neiman's, Saks, those higher end stores, I think they represent the best of the best. So to me, when I'm gonna go try on, that's where I'm gonna go. Don't let anybody intimidate you. If you need to buy, put on a credit card and then just take it back a few days later. I didn't say that, but <laughs> you understand. All right, so the goal is to have happy sewing, you guys. I put up a whole bunch of fabrics today that are stretch wovens that would be beautiful for little simple unlined jackets. So the goal is happy sewing. Happy sewing. Can we say that together? One, two, three. Happy, Happy sewing. sewing from Silhouette Patterns. <laughs> Bye, y'all.